Okay guys, today we're talking about the Glock FM-81 field knife, survival knife, whatever you want to call it. We're going to be talking about what I think about this blade. Is it a good survival option for a budget survival knife? And should you pick one up? Okay, so like I said, this is the Glock FM-81 field knife or survival knife. And I have had it for a quick minute, been played around with it, and I think it I decided to tell you guys what I think about it. Now, this knife definitely falls into an interesting category because originally it was designed to be a bayonet, but it was kind of later just marketed as a field knife or a survival knife, and so it, ho it holds a lot of the kind of bayonet heritage, but it still is an interesting choice, and I think the biggest pros to this blade have to be the fact that it is made out of a 5160 spring steel, so it is very, very tough. You could literally pound this thing through concrete, just about anything you want, and it will probably come back out alive. So that kind of is a nice factor for a survival knife, having supreme durability and just a heavy level of toughness. The other really nice thing about the Glock knife is the fact that it is also pretty darn cheap. These little knives can be had for around 30 bucks, and once again, that's also a very hard price to beat, especially be the factor that you're dealing with about a seven inch blade for that much money, and once again, it be made out of 10 or 5160 spring steel. So those kind of uh, factors, at least on paper, make this thing seem like a pretty attractive option, but how does it really perform in the field? Well, I have to say that it definitely is a type of military field knife or service knife, uh, and it can leave some things to be quite desired, desired in survival, but let's talk about it. So the ergonomics, like I said, are definitely something more like a K-bar or in line with what a K-bar would be like. It doesn't really have a nice contouring or nice contouring or, uh, you know, kind of refined uh, ergonomics like something like a Terrasaur or a Cold Steel SRK would have. That being said, it is also honestly not that uncomfortable in the hand. And of course you can because the handle is, because the handle is basically symmetrical, you can hold it, you know, in either reverse or forward grip. So if you're trying to do a chest lever, it might actually be pretty handy in fairness. But, yeah, so... Uh, the ergonomics are not the worst, but they are also not the best. It is also reasonably shock resistant when batoning, so that's definitely not too bad, and it actually does a pretty good job at batoning because of the fact that it's reasonably thin and reasonably long, and it kind of has a uh, more narrow blade. But overall, you know, it does basic survival functions pretty well, except for, as I've mentioned in previous videos, this knife still leaves a bit to be desired when it comes to feather sticking, and that is not so much the fact that it's not a sharp blade as some people might have suggested. This blade is actually pretty sharp, uh, honestly out of box. It's certainly sharp enough to do a lot of things, and that's definitely exemplified when you cut cross grain through wood. It does not uh, stop or really halt at all. It does an excellent job at that. So my blade, at least mine, came out of box pretty dang sharp, but the geometry on that angle or that grind angle is a little bit weird. So I just find it very difficult or I have a very hard time getting that edge to just catch just right on wood when I'm trying to feather stick the blade or not the blade, but feather stick wood with the blade. So that is something that I think could be trained out. And I think that there is a right angle. You just have to find it. But the sharpness out of box is just fine. So like I've said, it does have, it does do a pretty good job for the price point of being a survival knife. This is definitely a knife that I would consider maybe not specifically hunting out for. I think for the price point, uh, maybe going with, you know, one of these and an SRK. I kind of like the idea of these knives being able to be thrown in a truck or thrown in a kit and just forgotten about. You know, just make sure you have some grease on the blade so it doesn't rust. So in that kind of capacity, what I would say is it makes a pretty good backup blade if you're thinking of buying something to throw in a truck and throw in a pack or just throw in a 
somewhere and kind of forget about it, but still, you know, have a good solid knife that you could beat the hell out of should your primary or main blade, you know, fail you. Um, you know, this is a pretty good option for that kind of purpose, I would say. Once again, it's far from perfect, but it's not really that bad. So yeah, for throwing it into a pack and forgetting about this blade, I think it's a pretty good option in that regard. Now I think things like the SRK and other survival knives, especially more expensive ones, do a better job and are a little bit, uh, you know, more ergonomically pleasing. They don't have like a front or top guard to kind of try to get over, and they don't have a weird saw back. But th this knife is pretty good for a kind of just throw it in a pack, forget about it blade. So lastly, I will say a lot of people did request, you know, what do I think of this saw blade? And I think a lot of people expect me to say that's completely worthless. As you can see, I did try it out. I did use it a little bit. And I think that uh, by and large, saw blades, saw blades are pretty overhyped or kind of survivalized. You know, they're kind of like a fantasy item. They're not really something that's supremely useful and they're certainly not going to be like cutting down a tree with this saw blade. However, as I've shown in the video, uh, you know, these saw blades aren't necessarily completely useless. Uh, the primary purpose for the a saw blade like this, in my opinion, is going to be in notching. So as you can see, you know, if you want to create notches and my example was a little bit poor because I was using a reasonably small piece of wood, but this could be useful in especially large and dead trees if you want to cut, let's say, a reasonably large square notch. You know, you could do that with this blade with the saw back. So you could use the saw back to kind of go in and cut those uh, kind of initial parts for the uh, notch and then, you know, use the actual blade to pop that piece of wood out. So you can do work, especially notching work, with the saw back. It is not completely useless. It is a semi-useful feature. Um, I will say this to Glock's credit when it comes to the saw back. You know, I'm not a huge fan of them, but at least on the Glock knife, they gave you a solid, like, three, three and a half inches worth of saw back. So on a lot of your, you know, more gimmicky kind of survival knives, it might be an inch, inch and a half of saw back. And so at least with this knife, you know, you have a pretty good run of reasonably okay saw teeth that can do some notching work. So that's kind of what I have to say about the saw back on this thing. It's definitely not something that I would want or that I would seek out for my survival knife, but using the tool as it was designed or you know, using all of the parts of the tool, uh, it definitely is something that you can use and uh, it's not completely useless. So I'll put it that way. Anyways, guys, like I said, the Glock survival knife is an okay option for a backup. It is a, you know, nice knife to kind of throw in a pack and forget about. Definitely not a frontline blade for me by any means, but it's a cool knife, especially if you respect the heritage or if you like Glock, not Glock products in general, it's a pretty cool tool. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.